Two minute anesthesia laser. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Difference between laser and natural light. Laser is monochromatic to a single wavelength. It's coherent and collimated so the photons move in phase and parallel. Natural light is a spectrum of wavelengths and it's non-coherent and non-collimated. Lasers are normally named according to the type of laser medium. There could be a gas, a solid or a liquid. Gas could be CO2 or argon and they have specific uses and the medium relates to the wavelength. For example, CO2 has a wavelength of 10,600 nanometers. There are three main components in a laser. The energy source, the medium and the optical resonator. The energy source, this could be another laser, a diode, a chemical reaction or high voltage discharge. The medium could be a solid, i.e. crystals, a liquid, i.e. dyes, or a gas, for example, CO2. The optical resonator or optical cavity consists of the laser medium and also two mirrors. The mirror on the left side is highly reflective and the one on the right side is partially reflective. The partially reflective mirror allows the laser beam to enter the outlet coupler and pass out of the laser. Atomic mechanisms to reduce the laser beam. First of all, it's important to understand the basic structure of an atom. It's composed of a central nucleus of protons and neutrons surrounded by layers of electrons and energy levels as shown in the diagram in the top right corner. So energy is applied to the atom causing electrons to move from the ground state to a high energy level and thus gain energy. This process is known as atomic excitation by the process of energy absorption. Electrons can then move back down to the ground state by one of two mechanisms, either spontaneously or via a stimulated emission. When the electrons move down spontaneously, this releases one photon. However, during the process of stimulated emissions, this produces two photons, and this occurs via the following mechanisms. So as the photons are released, the bounce between the two mirrors and the outlet coupler, and this photon can hit an atom and thus lead to the release of two photons. This mechanism can lead to significant amplification of the reaction. A small number of photons are then able to escape the laser medium through the partially reflective mirror of the outlet coupler to produce the laser beam. Safety considerations for the use of laser for airway surgery. First of all, on the door to the theatre there should be a sign. Within the anaesthetic room you should have a well prepared nitist using laser tubes. Laser tubes are tracheal tubes constructed of a flexible stainless steel spiral with two cuffs filled with saline which acts as a heatsink. In some instances you can add methylene blue which makes it visible if the cuffs split. Within theatre you should use non-reflective matte black instruments, low FiO2, avoiding nitrous, specialised laser goggles, have a bucket of water available, blinds for the windows and only the surgeon controls the laser. The organisation should have clear policies and guidelines for the use of laser during this type of surgery. Lasers can be classified based on the risk of eye injury from 1 to 4. 1 it doesn't penetrate the eye and 4 eye protection is essential.